But Battlefield 2042 is getting closer and closer, and that has actually propelled Battlefield 4 to being a really popular game again, actually. Whether that's Battlefield 2042 or the doing of you know, the PlayStation Store, it's hard to say. But let's, uh, let's take a look at some Battlefield from the aspect of a Warzone player. So if you're unfamiliar with me, I've played Battlefield since 1942, so it's been a long, long time since I've been in, the, in this game. Uh, but I wanted to explain to you guys the differences between this game and why it's going to feel weird when you jump into it versus Call of Duty with what you're used to. So let's dive into some gameplay and take a look at a few of the major movement and gunplay components that you need to know about being a Warzone or Call of Duty player coming to Battlefield 4. All right, so while taking a dive and looking at these kits, I want to go ahead and turn my stuff off so you guys can see the entire screen. So we're going to start with the Assault Kit. So the Assault Kit is one of those things that, you know, it's got a few guns that are really worth using. And the first being the AEK-971, the SCAR-H, and the ACE-23. The, all these guns are phenomenal guns. And the loadout usually is going to be something like an ergo grip or an angled grip. Compensator and the Coyote um, Red Dot if you have it. Otherwise, the Cobra works just fine. The Ergo Grip, however, is what I typically throw on these guns just because it just works. Um, moving over to the field upgrade for this kit, I'm going to run the Combat Medic. Mainly because of the increase for maximum deployed med bags and packs by 1. Increases uh, the maximum sprint speed by 10%. And the defib charge up rate by 100% is a pretty big deal when you consider you can get your teammates back in the action with a heck of a lot more health, a uh, heck of a lot quicker. Medical unit allows you to actually have your vehicle heal nearby soldiers. So that is absolutely key if you are working in um, really dense areas of friendly soldiers. As far as engineer goes, there are a few options here as well. The MPX is going to be my go-to, however, for the gun. As far as carbines go, the AK-5C, ACWR is an excellent option as well. Um, they all kind of do the same thing. Again, Ergo Grip, Coyote, and just kind of run it if you can. Um, as far as the field upgrade goes, I'm going to go ahead and throw on the Anti-Tank or the Mechanic. So either one of these is really a good option depending on what you're doing. If you're somebody chasing tank kills, you're looking at um, increase of your maximum inventory of AT mines, which is pretty important, or rockets more deployed explosives, and less damage from explosives. All of these things add up to being a pretty good tank hunter, uh, and, and that definitely comes into play during the gameplay. Mechanic, if somebody is actually using a tank, uh, fast repair increases speed and sabotage of repairs by 35%. That's absolutely massive. Again, flak. Cover, which is uh, decreases the amount of incoming suppression by 50%. If you struggle with getting shots and getting hits, that's definitely something to pay attention to. Occupied vehicles will slowly repair nearby vehicles. That's also a super important perk that can help your team out immensely if you're working in a group, which you should be since this is Battlefield and not Call of Duty. Support, really, they're kind of uh, uh, screwed here. Uh, there's really one gun worth using, and that is the MG4. Not that bad to unlock. You just need to get a bunch of points, and that is most easily done by go ahead and farming things with either the indirect fire or go ahead and just dropping ammo packs around uh, on super condensed maps. So indirect fire is going to go ahead and give you the ammo bag upgrade, more ammo, um, increases your ammo for the XM25 and the M224, which you're probably not going to use either one of those, and the resupply unit, which is your vehicle resupplies ammo to people around you. Again, pretty important for team players. And definitely helps out. So as far as recon goes, there are a few guns you want to check out here. So there's the M98, the Gull, and the CS5. So these guns are going to be the faster of the group and are going to be a little more, a little more hit scanny, but still, let's be honest, we're sitting at 500 meters per second, so it's not going to be that hip scan in general or hit scan in general. Um, you're obviously going to want to run the sniper perk set here. Um, that is going to set you up for a longer breath hold less incoming suppression, quick unspot, and a longer spot for your team. So that all just kind of helps you get your team into position and relay information to them without you being, you know, super obvious with where you are. But like I had mentioned about suppression a handful of times, the importance of suppression and why 
Um, so let's, let's take a look at why suppression is a giant pain in the butt for game guys. Let's see why... So let's take a look at why suppression is a giant pain in the butt for us while we're playing Battlefield 4. So as we look at the gunplay on Battlefield 4, we're going to notice a few things. The gunplay is definitely different than of Call of Duty. Call of Duty, we definitely know that if we move around, we're definitely going to hit our target, and it's going to just kind of piss them off a little bit. It's like, it's like shaking the bee's nest. But if we go ahead and crouch, take our tap fire, we're going to hit our shots a little more often. And prone. And tap fire. And obviously, this depends on your skill. But, you know, it's going to hit a little harder. At 30 meters, we can hip fire and get the occasional shot. Um, but our hip fire at about 20 meters is entirely viable. And actually, it's even more viable if we go ahead and pull out a handgun. It's actually more viable if we use our secondary. The secondary, the hip fire, really is, is phenomenal. It's really worth using and not sighting up with the handgun unless you absolutely have to to get those headshots. But that shouldn't be entirely necessary. But like I was mentioning, the the actual uh, bullet velocity on this game is, is slow. It is a slow bullet velocity game, which means there's lots of bullet drop, which means that as you play, you're gonna have to get used to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just watch the bullet as it travels. And there is actually a slight drop at 100 meters. That's only 100 meters. So you're definitely going to notice that over the span of, of that window. And shooting basically, you know, right inside the window. So there's definitely a lot of bullet drop in this game. And it just it takes a minute to get used to with the lead. As you can see, I am just not great with the sniper rifles. And there's a reason for that. So I use the ARs almost exclusively because of the bullet uh, mechanics in this game are just so slow compared to that of Call of Duty. But obviously hanging out in the test range, you get used to a lot of these things. Um, as far as a few other things go, I want to talk about the settings for those of you coming from Call of Duty to Battlefield. So let's go ahead and back out of this, look at the options. So taking a look at a few things, we're going to notice that I have a lot of different changes. And the primary one actually is going to be in gameplay, advanced options. Then as we scroll through here, we're gonna notice a lot of changes. So my mini map size will be around 175% to 200%. Um, that allows the mini map to be larger and gives me the opportunity to see more on the mini map itself. Um, we're gonna notice that the background visibility has been changed and the icon visibility is super obvious on my mini map. Again, that's just so I can see. Minimap rotation with player on allows me to move around the map and not have to second guess with what way people are. I see one on the map in front of me. I know that it's in front of me and not to the north if I'm facing south, you know, something like that. Um, a reticle, this is, is up to you. You can change the reticle color, size, things like that. You can alter, I mean, a lot of things in here. Like the hit indicator for me, I run at the very large, 100% visibility and damage type based shape. So this lets me know what I'm hitting with and how hard I'm hitting. I also run a little different colored uh, hit indicator just so I have an idea what's going on. And I run a blue headshot head marker. If I play Call of Duty, um, I use that indicator just as a, a hard hit, like a, a shield break, basically. Um, as far as kill shots go, a full on red, just boom, they're done. Um, as far as, I mean, there's just a lot of options you can actually change on here, like enemy HUD world icons. I have these set to the largest um, scale with distance, and this basically lets me, with field upgrade um, armor icon, lets me see what people are using uh, as far as making their icon as large as I possibly can to make them as obvious as possible. So as we go over to video, I want to change my field of view to 95 to match the vehicle field of view. Motion blur off. That's a field off, colorblind off. Resolution scale, I run a little bit higher than my resolution just to make sure it's nice and clean without running anti-aliasing. Um, so running texture quality and the mesh quality on ultra as well as effects. So mesh quality, what that's gonna do is actually increase your render distance and allow you to see people at the furthest render distance possible. While having this alpha set to low to make sure that you have solid frame rates. Um, as far as 
keybind skill. There are a couple of keybinds that you need to pay attention to that can really make or break your game. So in the jets, especially, you want pitch up on space and you want pitch down on your crouch button. So what this allows you to do is to flip upside down. Um, so you take damage to the jet, flip upside down, hold space bar, and that will kind of keep you going. Same thing with the helicopter. Um, it can save your butt in a lot of fights. I also heavily suggest changing your jet bailout button to something across your keyboard. That's just, it makes life a little bit easier. So you're not accidentally ejecting out and throwing your plane away. On foot, uh, most of the controls are going to be about what Call of Duty is. Um, if it's not, go ahead and change that like V from a melee attack um, and set B to my change fire rate. But, you know, whatever you're using for settings on Call of Duty, go ahead and match that on this game. Just to make sure that you have those settings consistent across the board. But, with all of that being said, guys, let's go ahead and jump into a game and play some of this and enjoy some Battlefield. If you guys like this video, give it a like. If you like me, give me a subscribe. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you around.